Hello. Welcome to Science Last Week from Science Mission. I'm Sadashiva Pai and I'm going to discuss four papers here, two in detail and two in brief published in the week of April 14th. Let's start. This is an interesting paper from David Selzer's lab demonstrating the presence of major histocompatibility that is MHC1 antigens on human neurons. They demonstrate the mechanism by which MHC could be generated and what might happen in this scenario. David's lab used various histochemical analysis to demonstrate conclusively the staining of human brain neurons with antibodies for MHC1. Previously, there was no evidence of neuronal MHC expression in the normal adult human brain, but microglia and endothelia of hippocampus in normal and Alzheimer's disease patients showed MHC1 expression. Here is the representative figure showing the presence of MHC1 in tyrosine hydroxylase positive neurons of human brain in David's lab. Quantitative analysis showed more stain in the normal brain than the PD brain. In addition, mass spectrophotometric analysis also revealed MHC peptides in the human brain neurons. Data is not shown here. Others looked at MHC expression by interferon gamma. Immunofluorescence in human embryonic stem cell derived dopaminergic neurons after interferon gamma stimulation showed MHC expression in neurons and dendrites. Also, interferon gamma showed dose dependent increase in MHC expression in various brain regions as shown here. Where does interferon gamma come from? Microglia release interferon gamma when treated with neuromelanin and alpha synuclein. As you know, activated microglia has been implicated in Parkinson's disease. Control experiments revealed that lipopolysaccharide, an inflammatory component from gram-negative bacteria, also induced interferon gamma secretion in primary microglial culture. Does interferon gamma released by activated microglia lead to expression of MHC1 on neurons? It does, as per the data shown here. When the neurons were treated with media containing interferon gamma released from activated microglia after treatment with neuromelanin, alpha synuclein, neuromelanin plus alpha synuclein, nitrated alpha synuclein, and mutated alpha synuclein caused increased expression of MCH1. Also, if neutralizing antibody for interferon gamma is added to the culture, decreased expression of MHC1 on neurons was observed. This data is not shown here. These data demonstrate the expression of MHC1 on neurons under various conditions. In the absence of microglia, addition of L-DOPA, which is a precursor of dopamine and produces neuromelanin, increases expression of MHC1 in dopaminergic neurons. O-albumin, which is a 385 amino acid foreign protein, can be cleaved to an 8 amino acid peptide by dendritic cells and other antigen presenting cells. When the O-albumin is added to the culture, the peptide is processed inside the cells and the MHC1 with the peptide is displayed on the surface. Peptide with interferon gamma is also used as a control here. When dopaminergic neurons grown in the presence of the peptide, OT1 cytotoxic cells and interferon gamma, more than 50% of the cells died, while knockout of MHC1 protected the cells, indicating that the neuronal cell death is due to the MHC1 expression on the surface. In a similar experiment, when dopaminergic neurons are incubated with media, 
from activated microglia, similar cell death was seen confirming activated microglia mediated neuronal cell death in the presence of T cells. So the authors conclusively established expression of MHC on the neuronal surface under various conditions and examined the possibility of neuronal cell death by immune cells. Next, let's look at another publication. This one is from Alim Siddiqui's lab published in PNAS. The paper talks about the mechanism by which hepatitis C survives in the body. The authors demonstrate that hepatitis C virus induces mitochondrial fission via activation of a protein called DRP1. This was demonstrated by the immunofluorescence analysis of the mitochondrial fission as shown in this figure. Authors also show that DRP1 mRNA levels go up after HCV transfection and HCV gets phosphorylated and move to the mitochondria. Here authors demonstrate that HCV induced mitophagy that is mitochondrial fission and movement of mitochondria to the lysosomes. In the immunofluorescence experiments mitochondria were labeled and if they are in cytosol they will be yellow and if they move into lysosomes during mitophagy they will turn red. As you can see in this figure not much mitochondria in the lysosome in control and hence no mitophagy. But HCV infection increases red indicating mitochondria are in lysosomes due to mitophagy. Authors also demonstrate that DRP1 silencing blocks mitochondrial mitophagy as there was less mitochondria in lysosomes. These results indicate that DRP1 mediate, mediates mitophagy. What happens if you inhibit mitochondrial fission? As shown here, extracellular white virus particles titer was decreased in DRP1 silenced cells, indicating the functional role of mitochondrial fission in HCV secretion. Intracellular infectivity showed a notable increase, indicating the accumulation of mature HCV virions because of the inhibition of virus particle secretion. Silencing DRP1 and MFF did not affect HCV replication. However, in HCV infected cells, authors observed an increase in intracellular HCV RNA levels in DRP1 silenced cells, reflecting the accumulation of HCV RNA as a result of inhibition of secretion. Interference of mitochondrial fission negatively affected cellular glycolytic rates and total cellular ATP pool. HCV induced aberrant mitochondrial fission may also contribute in part to modulate the innate immune response. Taken together, these results suggest that HCV-induced mitochondrial fission both affects HCV secretion and contributes in part to the evasion of the innate immune system. Depletion of DRP1 or Parkin induced robust cytochrome C release from the mitochondria and promoted activation of Casapase 37 followed by subsequent cleavage of poly ADP ribose polymerase a Casapase substrate. Induction of apoptosis was also substantiated by tunnel assay which shows accumulation of tunnel positive cells. Together these results strongly suggest that HCV mediated induction of mitochondrial fission and mitophagy, although serving as a quality control mechanism to eliminate damaged mitochondria, also protects virus-infected hepatocytes from
from apoptotic cell death facilitating persistent viral infection. Next we will talk about an interesting paper from Dang Lee's lab published in Cell Stem Cell. The paper talks about human somatic cell nuclear transfer using adult cells. Successful somatic cell nuclear transfer that is SCNT with human cells has proved to be challenging to achieve. Only fetal or infant SCNT has been reported so far. Authors generated human embryonic stem cells via SCNT using dermal fibroblasts from 35 and 75 year old males. Embryonic stem cells expressed standard stem cell markers. Genetic analysis revealed that nuclear DNA derived from male donor and mitochondrial DNA derived from oocytes. Now we can generate human embryonic stem cells directly from adults. Next we will look into an interesting paper from Paula Arlotta's lab published in Science. Myelin is implicated in complex neuronal function including learning and cognition and abnormal myelination is associated with neurological disorders. Conductance of neural signals depending, depend on thickness of the myelin. The distribution of myelinated tracts along the length of axon has been assumed to be uniform. Authors looked at the myelin distribution along single axons in the murine brain using sophisticated high throughput electron microscopy. What they found out was individual neurons have distinct longitudinal distribution of myelin. Neurons in the superficial layers displayed the most diversified profiles. Myelinated segments are interspersed with long unmyelinated tracts. Functional significance of these heterogeneous profiles of myelination require further research, but authors propose that it may have served the evolutionary expansion and diversification of the neocortex by enabling the generation of different arrays of communication mechanisms and emergence of highly complex neuronal behaviors. Thank you for watching Science Last Week.